Elon Musk just increased his offer for Twitter to 54.20. Nice. And although he said that that's his final offer, I actually think it's not going to be his final offer. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you how his final offer could probably be 69.69. .69. Giggity. So smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. You're watching more money. Let's get it. What's up, guys? And it was just a wild day today. So let's get right into it. You guys already know Elon Musk made what could be described as a hostile offer to take Twitter completely private at $54.20 per share. And you can see that right here in this article put out by Yahoo Finance, where they totally didn't even get the joke because they just published in the headline $54 a share. Guys, come on, it's $54.20 for a reason. The finance world is very quickly turning into the troll world. Just get with the times, Yahoo Finance, just do it. And a lot of people are speculating on what could potentially happen. I have to side with Jim Cramer here, where he said that the board really has no choice but to reject this offer. Jim Cramer didn't really provide why, like the context as to why he believes that the board will reject that offer. But of course, Elon Musk is already trying to circumvent that by going beyond the board. So you can see here with this tweet where somebody asked him, if the board of directors at Twitter rejects the offer made by Elon Musk, wouldn't the board be acting in direct opposition to the financial interest of the shareholders? Absolutely not. The board's job is to make sure that the offer is sufficient enough that the majority of the shareholders would benefit materially from it. That's my interpretation of what I think of that. And what that really does is it allows the board to reject any unusual or unreasonable offers right away, and then they can just continue on with the stewardship of the business. However, in cases like this one, where the offer price is approximately 40% higher than where the shares were trading at prior to the offer, this seems like a pretty reasonable offer. And so Elon Musk is trying to circumvent the board's potential decline here by saying that it's utterly indefensible not to put this offer up to a shareholder vote. And I think he's absolutely right. I do believe that the reason why we didn't get a response from the board yet is because they're kind of figuring out how they're going to put it to the vote of the shareholder. And I believe that it is going to end up going to shareholder vote. But I also believe that the shareholders are going to reject this offer price. And here's why. So you can see overall that the $45.08 that the shares are currently trading at are 15% higher than the $39.31 that the shares were trading at prior to Elon Musk's involvement. However, you can also see that the 5420 is approximately 38% higher than where the shares were trading at prior to this. But that's not the full story because if you can see here that Twitter is actually down 49% from its high in February of this year of $77.06 a share. So here's a situation where Twitter declined more than 50% and then on our Patreon calls, we actually got very active with valuing Twitter and we had a lot of discussions and detailed discussions on whether or not Twitter is a viable company to invest in. And I'm going to explain to you in this video why we decided that at its current state, Twitter was not worth investing in. However, if Elon Musk takes this company private, it's going to be worth a lot more to him. So I'm going to explain that all in this video. And that explanation will explain why Elon Musk was at a TED talk today. And he said that he has a backup plan to buy Twitter just in case if there's other issues that stop him from buying it. I really believe that Elon Musk is working from a different valuation model than other people are. But also, in addition to the economic argument, Elon Musk is not, in my opinion, buying Twitter exclusively for economic reasons. You can see here in the letter that he wrote to Twitter chairman Brett Taylor, he invested in Twitter because it's because he believes in its potential to be the platform for free speech and he believes that free speech is a societal imperative for a functioning democracy. Twitter has extraordinary potential and he is hoping to unlock it. Now, you guys got to understand the motivations of Elon Musk. I've been listening to so many talks from Elon Musk for, I would say, at least a decade now. The guy is very interested in changing the world and leaving a legacy. And so the things that motivate this guy to sleep on the floor of his factory 
are different than what motivates the average capitalist, I would say that. But with that said, I'm gonna show you guys our tracker that all the Patreons get access to at just $5 a month. And like I've said in previous videos, you can sign up for the Patreon at $5 a month, get access to these models. And if you don't like it, send me a message on Patreon within the first month and just say, hey, Tay, I'm not interested and I'll refund your $5. So there's no risk to you, but I highly encourage you to check it out. We have more and more models being added to this tracker every day and the models are in extreme amounts of detail. But anyways, moving on. So when we're looking at the tracker, you can see that there's three segments here. There's the companies that I'm following and there might be around 50 names in that category right now. There's works in progress. These are names that are told to me by the Patreons that I'm starting to work on. And then there's companies that I've modeled, but I'm not a buyer for at any price because I believe that there's certain issues with the company that I'm not interested in. So sometimes it could be that management have shown that they're not shareholder friendly or other times it could be sort of like systemic issues. Other times it could just be that the company relies too much on debt. There's a whole slew of issues, which is why those companies end up in this category. Now, the reason why Twitter ended up in this category is what I'm gonna to show to you next. You can see that their stock-based compensation is very high. You can see from 2015 to 2021 that continuously the stock-based compensation has on average been more than 50% of the cash from operations that the company's been generating. I'm just not a huge fan of significant amounts of share-based compensation. It doesn't sit well with me. However, I understand that there's people who are not too concerned with that and that's totally cool. Your valuations are just gonna be different than my valuations, that's all. And so when I think about share-based compensation, I actually think about what is the dilutive factor to the shareholders. And so when I calculate free cash flow, I deduct that share-based compensation amount from the free cash flow because essentially you're diluting the shareholders and when you download the model for twitter you can see that dilutive factor that i've built in but from the valuation you can see that at a terminal multiple of 25 times a terminal discount rate of, of 11.5 percent and a medium term discount rate of five percent i'm valuing twitter at approximately 41 dollars a share so at the current share price twitter is very overvalued or at least it doesn't have a significant margin of safety. And, I, and you guys already know that I like a 50% margin of safety at least. And so Twitter doesn't qualify. However, if you take Twitter private and you get rid of all that share-based compensation and you just pay these guys out in cash. And so you reduce the free cash flow from an average of 25% of revenue to 20% of revenue and you pay out that 5% in cash for bonuses for the management, you get to a valuation like this where at a terminal multiple of 25 times earnings with an 11 and a half terminal discount rate and a medium term discount rate of 5%, I'm getting to a valuation close to $80 per share. And so at the current share price of $45, you can see that the share price as a percentage of valuation or the intrinsic value is near 50%. And so here's one of those situations where if you reconfigure that share-based compensation and you pay those management bonuses in cash as a private company, this company is worth a lot more, at least to me, than what it was as a public company. I think that's what Elon Musk is seeing here as well. So this is a situation where now, because this company is worth $80 per share, and it might actually be worth more to Elon Musk than $80 a share. So you can very well see how he could raise his share price to 69.69 giggity. And you guys already know that I always come to the table with doing the work. So there's a lot of media people right now who are saying that 5420 is way too expensive for Twitter. That's because you guys haven't done the work. You guys don't have these full on models. You guys aren't considering all the expense lines. You guys aren't valuing these things out. So you wouldn't understand what the true value of Twitter is. I truly believe, once again, that if you change the compensation structure, you have an $80 per share stock. And to wrap this up, I'll just leave you with this. Elon Musk doesn't seem to miss. And I really think that the reason why this guy doesn't seem to miss, deep down, we all know that Elon Musk is actually just a Martian disguised as a human trying to get home using frustratingly primitive technology. And all this time, we thought that the tech CEO that was the alien was Mark Zuckerberg. Now, if you didn't see my earlier video on the Twitter takeover announcement, no problem. You can get to that video right here.